Battle of Muda, a forgotten chapter in Islamic history. Have you ever heard of the Battle of Muda? If not, you are not alone. Many Muslims and non-Muslims alike are unaware of this epic clash between the early Muslims and the mighty Byzantine Empire. The Battle of Muda took place in the year 629 CE, near the village of Muda in present-day Jordan. It was the first military encounter between the Muslims and the Byzantines, and it was triggered by the murder of a Muslim envoy by a Christian Arab tribe allied to the Byzantines. In this blog post, we will explore the background, the events, and the significance of this historic battle. We will also learn about the heroism and sacrifice of some of the most prominent companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who led the Muslim army in this battle. Background of the Battle The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not only a spiritual leader, but also a political leader. He established the first Islamic state in Medina, and he sent letters and messengers to various rulers and tribes, inviting them to Islam. One of his emissaries was Alharith bin Umar al-Azdi, who was sent to the ruler of Basra, a city in Syria under the Byzantine rule. Basra's governor and people were Arabs, but they were Christians and loyal to the Byzantine emperor. On his way to Basra, Alharith was intercepted and killed by Shurabil bin Amr al-Ghassani, the governor of al-Balqa and a representative of the Byzantine emperor. This was a grave violation of the norms of diplomacy and a declaration of war. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was outraged by this crime, and he decided to send an army to avenge the death of his envoy and to challenge the Byzantine aggression. He appointed Zayid bin Harida, his freed slave and adopted son, as the commander of the army. He also appointed Jafar bin Abi Talib, his cousin and brother-in-law, and Abd Allah bin Raha, a poet and a leader of the Ansar, as the second and third in command, respectively. He gave them the banner of Islam, and instructed them to reach the scene of Alharitha's murder and invite the people to Islam. If they accepted, they would be spared. If they refused, they would have to fight. He also ordered them to follow the rules of war in Islam, and not to harm any civilians, women, children, elderly, monks, or trees. The Muslim army consisted of 3,000 men, which was the largest army that the Muslims had ever assembled. They set off from Medina, and marched towards Syria. They reached Man, a town near the border of the Byzantine territory, where they received some alarming news. They learned that the Byzantine emperor had mobilized a huge army of 200,000 soldiers, including 100,000 Greeks and 100,000 Christian Arabs from various tribes. The Byzantine army was waiting for them at Muta, a village near the Jordan River. The Muslim army was outnumbered by more than 60 to 1, and they faced a formidable enemy with superior weapons, armor, and horses. The events of the battle. The Muslim army was faced with a difficult decision. Should they proceed to Muta and face certain death, or should they retreat and wait for reinforcements from Medina? They decided to consult each other and seek guidance from Allah. They remembered the words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who had said, if Zaid is martyred, Jafar should take over his position, and if Jafar is martyred, Abd Allah bin Raha should take over his position. They realized that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had foretold their fate, and they resolved to fight for the sake of Allah, even if it meant martyrdom. They said, we will not go back. We will either be victorious or martyr. The Muslim army continued their march, and reached Muta, where they encountered the Byzantine army. The battle began, and the Muslims fought with courage and faith. Zaid bin Harida, the commander of the Muslim army, held the banner of Islam and charged into the enemy ranks. He killed many of them, but he was eventually wounded and fell. Jafar bin Abi Talib, the second in command, took the banner from him and continued the fight. He fought with such bravery that he was nicknamed, Jafar the Flyer, because he seemed to fly over his horse and strike the enemy from all sides. He received more than 90 wounds on his body, and he lost both of his arms. He held the banner with his upper arms, until he was also killed. Abd Allah bin Raha, the third in command, took the banner from him and recited a poem, expressing his willingness to die for Allah. He also fought valiantly, but he too was martyred. The banner of Islam fell to the ground, and the Muslims were in disarray. They looked for someone to lead them, and they found Khalid bin al-Walid, a nobleman from the Quraysh tribe and a recent convert to Islam. He was a skilled warrior and a brilliant strategist, and he had fought against the Muslims in the Battle of Uhud, before he embraced Islam. He picked up the banner and rallied the Muslims. He organized them into small units and launched a series of attacks and retreats, confusing and exhausting the enemy. 
He changed the position of the banner several times, making the enemy think that the Muslim commander was still alive. He exploited the terrain and the weather to his advantage, and he managed to save the Muslim army from annihilation. He withdrew from the battlefield, and led the Muslims back to Medina. He was later given the title of, the Sword of Allah, by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for his remarkable performance in this battle. The Significance of the Battle The Battle of Muta was a decisive moment in Islamic history. It was the first time that the Muslims faced the Byzantine Empire, the superpower of the time, and it marked the beginning of the Muslim expansion into the Levant and beyond. It was also a test of faith and courage for the Muslims, who faced overwhelming odds and sacrificed their lives for the cause of Islam. It was a demonstration of the loyalty and love that the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had for him and for Allah. It was a source of inspiration and motivation for the future generations of Muslims, who would continue the struggle for the spread of Islam and the establishment of justice and peace in the world. The Battle of Muta also produced some of the most illustrious martyrs in Islamic history. Zaid bin Harida, Jafar bin Abi Talib, and Abd Allah bin Raha were among the closest and most beloved companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They were his relatives, friends, and advisors. They were among the first to accept Islam, and they supported the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in every situation. They were exemplary Muslims, who embodied the values and virtues of Islam. They were honored by Allah and his Messenger, and they were granted the highest rank in Paradise. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was deeply saddened by the news of their martyrdom, and he prayed for them and their families. He also informed the Muslims of the glad tidings that they had received from Allah. He said, Zaid took the banner and was martyred, then Jafar took the banner and was martyred, then Abd Allah bin Raha took the banner and was martyred. Then the banner was taken by one of Allah's swords, meaning Khalid bin al-Walid, and Allah gave him victory. He also said, I saw Jafar flying in paradise with the angels, and his place is like a fast bird. He has two wings of light, with which he flies wherever he wishes in paradise. He also said, the angels are amazed by Abd Allah bin Ra'aha, because he came to the garden of paradise on his horse. The Battle of Muta is a forgotten chapter in Islamic history, but it is a chapter that deserves to be remembered and appreciated. It is a chapter that teaches us about the importance of faith, courage, sacrifice, and leadership. It is a chapter that honors the heroes of Islam, who gave their lives for the sake of Allah and His Messenger. It is a chapter that inspires us to follow their example, and to strive for the cause of Islam in our times. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the Battle of Muta. In the next blog post, we will explore some of the lessons and applications that we can derive from this battle. Stay tuned, and may Allah bless you.